Hey, what's going on there, folks? How's everyone doing out here on this Monday evening? It is the Earthmaster here, about 10:30 uh, p.m. here, California time, July 15th, 2024. The latest activity here on the globe shows the uh, some more earthquake activity, deep earthquake activity into the Fiji area. Also, a 2.3 coming into the island of Hawaii. Uh, I want to check out this activity here first around the Fiji area, where we just seen a 4.6 here in the last hour. Super deep again, 600, almost 600 kilometers deep here into the Tonga Trench. A pair of shallow earthquakes here earlier, bouncing back and forth here once again between deep and shallow adjustment with lacking activity here, lacking seismic adjustment, roughly about Papua New Guinea eastward here along this plate boundary. So keep an eye on that area. Uh, it's just, it's odd, very odd to see such a quiet spell for this area. So continue to watch that region here. Clustering going on around the Philippines. Not a whole lot up here across the northern edge or northwestern edge here of the, the uh, Pacific Plate. Over into Alaska. Some older movement quakes here from last night. Really nothing new to report up here. Uh, if I see something out of the norm, I definitely mention it. But a lot of times, similar to California, there's just a handful of microquakes up there with really nothing major uh, of interest around the Alaska area for now. Uh, Pacific Northwest, a few smaller microquakes there across the Mount St. Helens area. Let's check out the uh, Trimmer map here tonight. See what we have for Cascadia Trimmer. 54 epicenters of Trimmer. That's along the Cascadia. Roughly, uh, that would count pr pretty much qualify as the southern and the central segment here of the Cascadia subduction zone. Not a big deal. 54. Looks like we're going down a little bit. After a uh, an extended period there of tremor for about, oh, I don't know, about six weeks or so. Seen an uh, incredible amount of tremor along with activity stirring up out here in the Pacific. Looks like maybe for now things are calming down, but knock on wood. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that doesn't trigger anything. Uh, down here at the extreme southern end of the Cascadia, we did see a little bit of earthquake activity this evening. 2.7 and a 2.4. The depth of these earthquakes indicative there of the subduction zone, about 18 and 14 kilometers deep. Again, at the extreme southern end. Uh, the rest of Northern California here, handful of spotty microquakes across the area. Um, and ex way down south here, just a handful of, uh, as you can see, very small earthquakes. 2.3, Borrego Springs area uh, earlier this evening. Little bit of swarming going on here near the Salton City area, just on the west side here of the Salton Sea. That is on the Pacific side here of the plate boundary, which extends over here into the Brawley Seismic Zone. Nothing major for now. Uh, just a slight amount of increasing activity here in terms of microquake, but if you look at the 2.5 map and above, well, not a whole lot. But seismic activity in the microquake department appears to be on the uptick there a little bit around Helena Montana up here a couple uh, earthquakes on the small side really nothing big going on Yellowstone National Park roughly about the same let's go see what's going on for the live seismograph stations there um, some wind noise it looks like from earlier I do see what looks like one earthquake here within the last hour very small microquake in this area uh, looks like that earthquake just barely showed up here across Mary Lake as well. Little bitty one, but uh, for the most part, uh, everything looks pretty quiet out there across Yellowstone National Park Super Volcano. Uh, Texas and Oklahoma still getting some earthquakes out there in the oil fields. No new earthquake activity here to report around the Illinois region. They did see that uh, a little earthquake this morning, super early in the morning, waking folks up out there, but as we've seen earlier, in my update, uh, they do get some earthquakes out here, and some bigger than that. All right, uh, let's check out Hawaii, see what's going on out here on the a big island. Still getting uh, a little bit of activity up here, mainly in this region here. As you can see, there's two separate regions. There's one up here around the summit, and there's one down here across the upper east rift zone. And it's kind of been that way uh, over the past week or so. Uh, you know, there's a, definitely a noticeable split here between the two seismic swarms that are going on around the Kilauea volcano. Uh, mostly twos, a couple threes in there as well. Uh, let's go check out the volcano hazards map here real quick. 
on Kilauea Volcano and see what's going on. Uh, congratulations there again to MST Pair, our member winner this month here. We do member drawings every single month, so if you don't get a chance uh, to jump, uh, if you didn't get a chance to jump on board this time, jump on board to be a member today and you can be entered into the drawing next month. Uh, earthquake activity, as you can see here on the map, fairly consistent. And a seismograph station out here. Let me zoom in, see what we have. I always like to double check the recorded seismos because, well, you know, a lot of times they don't include some of the smaller quake activity. But uh, for now, I mean, obviously there's some earthquake activity. Uh, doesn't look quite as active as what it did earlier. Same for that one. Uh, let's check out the deformation chart here. See what's going on. Little decline in all that static little choppy earthquake activity that I noticed here this morning and last night. We're still up there. Look at that inflation uh, leveled off here a little bit on the chart. Last two days, last week is visible as well. Uh, but still obviously quite the inflated event going on there across Kilauea Volcano and it's I keep saying it it's only a matter of time but uh, I think I don't know I think maybe we need a little bit more uh, adjustment out here across the Pacific Plate to really stir things up out there right in the middle right in the hot spot right you move around the Pacific Plate well that can ultimately adjust things down below uh, really haven't seen a whole lot of deeper earthquake activity out here uh, and most of the time here we'll see Pahala with the deep activity stir up. And down here it's been relatively minor uh, in terms of the multitude of quakes. But still, pressurization is quite great out here across this area. So we'll continue to watch that. Again, the uh, Kilauea Volcano at a yellow and advisory. Uh, their update really didn't say anything of any abnormal activity this morning. Uh, it was put out... Uh, Let's see here. That was actually put out a little bit later. Uh, a minor increase in earthquake activity has been observed beneath the summit and the Upper East Rift Zone over the past 24 hours. Gradual inflation of the summit and the Upper East Rift Zone continues. And it's just the same wording here. So, um, nothing new. Uh, let's check out the globe here, see what's going on. New Zealand quieting down a little bit out here. Keep an eye on this region here. Like I say, deep earthquake activity, shallow, deep, shallow. You know, that's got to be applying tremendous strain out here across this area. Uh, a little spotty activity out here around, uh, where's that 4.5 at Iran? Looks like the Iran area earlier this evening. Uh, aside from that, the Atlantic Ocean looks pretty quiet. Really not seeing anything major uh, showing up here on the globe. Iceland activity. Let's go over here and check out the earthquake activity map in that area and uh, take a look and see what's going on here. We got 66 earthquakes. Uh, here's the extreme small ones as, as well. Um, not a whole lot here around the Grindavik area or the Savart Singhi region, which is a good sign, but eventually that's going to uh, not be the case because this is another area where things are getting quite uh, amplified out here in terms of inflation. Uh, let's check out the Savart Singhi area four hour run. And uh, there's our previous eruption back there at the end of May. This is the vertical displacement, but steadily on the uptick here, getting awfully close to uh, matching what we've seen previously up to that uh, last eruption that we've seen. So. Another waiting game. Another volcano, another waiting game. Uh, I did see some earthquake activity around the... Uh, let's see if I can bring them up here. Uh, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Is this the one I want? I think it was Mount Etna really kicking up here recently. But they're almost always having earthquakes up there, right? If you really think about it. Um, 
The eruption at the Etna continued during the 3 to 9 July. That was uh, last week. And, um, you know, that's almost always, always active. Similar to these other volcanoes out there. Kamchatka Volcanic Arc. Got uh, Stromboli, is that right? Uh, lava overflows from the series of vents along this area. So always, almost always got active activity out here. If you look, these have been, you know, added on here as far as the report status goes. Couple there in Italy. Uh, got uh, the home reef area of Tonga, it looks like. That could have something to do with all the activity right now, right? With the bouncing back and forth of deeper activity. Uh, looks like there was some uh, volcanic activity or eruption there on the 3rd to 9th of July due to thermal anomalies. Um, got some discolored water in there as well. And that was, uh, like I say, that was earlier this month. Here's this one in the uh, Kamchaka area. Started back on June. Uh, and maybe continued through the 4th of July. There's that one in Italy. So a couple new volcanoes look like they have been added to the... Uh, the chart but uh, as far as anything significant goes you know it's just those are typical volcanoes that see a lot of activity on occasion or on any given day I should say um, what do we got coming on here a little bit of KP index being amplified it wasn't called for but uh, looks like we're seeing a little bit three to four here on the KP index. I don't know about this. I'm not for sure what's going on with that. That looks a little offline. Is that If that's the case here, then we're going to see auroras all the way down to Mexico or maybe even further if that was the case. But something's going on there with that chart. It looks a little uh, defunctionable. I'm not for sure how, active or, uh, how accurate this one is there in Boulder. But uh, a little bit coming up here to the three, almost a three and a half range. Uh, maybe some roars out there at the extreme higher latitudes. Again, it wasn't called for it out here. As far as sunspots go and the flares, got a little bit of sea flare activity here recently. But there's an X flare here from a couple days ago. Let's take a look at the active regions. 37, 38 over here now. Almost out of sight, out of mind. That is a complex area, very dynamic. And uh, it continues to evolve and grow, and we'll watch it, see if it makes its way back here around the Earth-facing side of the sun here in a couple weeks. Right now, uh, the main area I'm kind of watching is this area down here, looking uh, like a new sunspot getting ready to uh, maybe turn into something major. 3751 is uh, getting fairly complex here, and that will be turning into the Earth-directed view here in the coming days and uh, that's uh, definitely harbors some potential there for some stronger flares if it continues to gain some momentum and the rest of these sunspots out here fairly stable aside from 37 38 but that's way out there on the western limb for now no major roars in the forecast as noted and far as the far side of the sun goes well um there's not a whole lot here this is the far side. This is the current Earth-facing side. Uh, I guess we'll watch 3733, former sunspot 3733. That should be here in a uh, about a week or so. But I don't see anything major developing. 3751 is the one I think we need to watch right now for some uh, some further activity. All right, as far as the hurricane status goes out here, well, we got... Uh, potentially a disturbance out here in the Pacific. This is the one that they've been watching. Uh, it's going to be branching off of the main tropical moisture band that sits down here close to the equator. Um, got a 40% chance here of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours. So keep an eye on that. Disturbance 1. They're well off the coast of Mexico. This is headed off into the north northwestward direction. Uh, the Atlantic, pretty quiet. Nothing expected. Central Pacific, there's that uh, um, 
you can barely see yeah, a little bit of disturbance going on here that's the same one that is on the um, the eastern Pacific here just barely visible so what we want to do is pull up the regional map out here for I guess this will work here I want to check out the upper dynamics see what's going on here uh, I meant this one here we go and it's one of these down here it looks like let's put this into motion see what we got I guess it's gonna be this one this little area really doesn't look like much it look it gets eaten up there and uh, really not not expected much out there I do know we got a massive high pressure out here along the west coast that's going to be cooking us here in the days ahead. I'm not looking forward to that at all. Uh, more hot weather out here is expected across the west coast. Uh, the center portion of the country there looks like it's going to get uh, some below normal temperatures there, which is, uh, you know, they, uh, I'm a little jealous because I've been baking out here 100 degrees. I don't know how many days we've had here in a row of 100 degrees or higher. I mean, I can handle roughly around 100, but it, when it gets up to 110, 115, it gets to be too much. It's not not good. And um, But these guys out here in the Plain States look like they got a little treat coming here in the days ahead. Um, and it may stick around a little bit. We'll have to see how that uh, develops. Uh, current windy map out here. I want to check out precipitation accumulation. See if there's any uh, major interesting uh, setups out here along the west coast. And as you can see, nothing. Hot and dry. Hot, boring, dry weather out here along the California area. Uh, looks like some more moisture down there in the typical regions of the southeast and the east coast. Uh, not a whole lot of monsoonal moisture coming up here. There's a little bit, but uh, Pacific Northwest. High and dry. All right, folks. I think that's about it. Um, Yellowstone here. What is that on? Is that Lake Yellowstone? That is Lake Yellowstone. Hmm. I don't really see anything of any interest out there. I'm not for sure what that is coming in to the seismos. Maybe some of this noise here recently. Is there any storms up there? I'll double check here and make sure. Well, not a whole lot. Fairly quiet up there. Not, not really seeing anything of any interest. Uh, there's some kind of noise going on. There's some kind of noise kicking up there on the Yellowstone Seismos, but uh, hard to say exactly what it is. Mainly around Little Weston, uh, Grant Village, and it looks like it's being picked up here on the, the uh, Lake Yellowstone Seismo. Doesn't look like earthquake activity, though. It looks a little odd. So we'll check back on it in the morning, see if maybe we can pick up on it a little bit, find out what that is. Have a good night, folks. Congratulations again to MST Pair, the latest winner on the member drawing held today. So we'll catch you guys out here in the morning for the Tuesday morning update. Stay safe out there.